Hello everyone, today I'm going to do a product review on a 112 scale chassis. Now this 112 scale chassis is by a Japanese company called Hiro Factory. As you can see in the backdrop, there's uh, Hiro Factory's uh, logo. Uh, please check out uh, Hiro Factory's website, uh, www.hirofactory.jp, or even Facebook, Hiro Factory, and you'll be able to uh, check out his uh, Facebook page with lots of update photos, um, new and interesting things that he, he's coming out with. Um, just a little bit about uh, Hiro. Uh, Hiro Nakatani is uh, a well-known uh, Japanese uh, racer um, here in Japan and different parts of uh, Asia. And, uh, you know, he's been around for a while and, uh, you know, he does a remarkable job with, you know, designing his own chassis and racing with them and being very competitive. Like, he is always on the podium for whatever event that he attends, that be it regional or international. And uh, he does a phenomenal job uh, with his uh, racing and not only that, with uh, his designs. Um, but, you know, let's get into it. Let's take a look at uh, the Hero Factory uh, X, uh, sorry, Hero Factory 12X15. This is what we got here. All right, let's take a look. All right, so you might notice that there are some similarities to the uh, VBC. Uh, you could probably tell that the plastics are similar to the VBC Lightning, which is correct. Uh, the plastics uh, have been uh, uh, used, taken over from the VBC. And, you know, looking at the plastics, uh, I really like the design and just the very like sleek design of the uh, VBC plastics and they're very very sturdy very tough plastic and uh, so you got the durability there now a quick note uh, Hiro Factory and uh, VBC teamed up and they designed uh, the VBC Lightning and uh, and uh, that seemed like it was a fairly successful chassis I don't know the history so much with that chassis but uh, but after that uh, uh, Hiro uh, Nakatani decided to go on his own and design his own chassis and so you have here what you have here is his own design his own creation he is using some components from uh, the VBC uh, lightning series but you know the chassis layout and what you see in the carbon fiber and uh, other components are um, his own designs all right, so let's take a look at the chassis itself here. Now, this is uh, 2.5 millimeter uh, thick uh, US grade uh, carbon fiber. Um, you got up here uh, three millimeter, where like the support here, you have three millimeter on the back, you got three millimeter for the servo support. So, you got uh, some really, you got, he's definitely designed this chassis uh, and he's uh, definitely placed a thicker carbon fiber where it's necessary just to avoid any flexing or any tweaking whatsoever that might occur. All right, so the main chassis itself, uh, it's nicely done, nicely cut out. Nice, uh, you know, it's uh, been cut out in certain areas just to lighten things up. Uh, you have multiple uh, hole positions here uh, in order to uh, move the battery fore or aft. Um, and the only thing I don't know about the hole positions on the front are these four holes here. Uh, I just received the kit as is. I didn't receive a manual, uh, but uh, that might be for something um, something else, but not to worry about that. Uh, the rear pod, uh, it's nice, uh, thick uh, carbon fiber, so you definitely have a nice, durable setup here. Uh, this is also 2.5 millimeters, so if we're to move into the back here, uh, this, is, uh, this is from uh, the VBC Lightning. Um, one thing that I can't get over, that I absolutely, absolutely love, and that is the black anodizing. I just love the, the black, stealth, sleek look to it. Uh, it's just beautifully done. Um, you know, the, you know the, the black CNC, you know, it really complements the carbon fiber. And, you know, you have this like a nice uh, chamfering done along the edges, which is really nice as well. And, you know, they've uh, definitely, definitely lightened up the rear pod as much as uh, possible, you know, but, you know, avoiding any, you know, weakening of the actual uh, rear pods itself. So, 
Uh, it looks really nice. Uh, so this is actually taken from uh, the VBC uh, series. And uh, yeah, it's really nice, well designed. Uh, the actual brace here, uh, it's three millimeters thick, as I mentioned before. That's also from the VBC Lightning. Uh, but like, there's these really neat little features that you know you you just have to cl you you don't really notice them from afar. But if you look closely, you got this nice little keyed in effect right here, which really locks in that rear pod, so it prevents it from tweaking any further. Which I really like that kind of design because you know any hit you know like the motor in your car you know if you if you hit something like that weight of that motor will try to move whatever it's locked into and, and or tweak whatever it's locked into and like if you got this all keyed in with this nice thick aluminum you know the chances of this pod tweaking uh, is quite uh, quite minimal um, now for to look up here at the uh, upper damper plate uh, this is 2.5 millimeter carbon fiber um, now, I think on the previous uh, models that they had designed, uh, this kind of extended out further, just like a longer front. Uh, he's decided to opt for uh, you know a sh you know further back position. Um, I'm not too sure handling wise how that would uh, go on the track because I haven't raced this thing at all. But I you know it's kind of similar to what uh, Yokomo and most 112 scales are going on with design over here um so so that was the, the rear pod uh let's just go over to the the axle i decided to take it out and weigh it uh it's quite light it's a uh, 22.7 grams so you got a nice light axle and that's actually including the steel uh ball uh differential setup here so if you were to go to ceramics you're going to shave off a few grams there you know everything Everything counts with a 112 scale, you know, especially if you're running stock, you want a nice light differential. And uh, I paid some big bucks to lighten up my differential on my Yokomo. And, but like this comes standard, so you got a nice setup right here. Once again, nice black CNC machined, uh, I think it's like T775, which is all the aluminum components on here. That's uh, the type of aluminum that they use. So you definitely got the durability down. Um, really nice uh, differential very smooth just just sitting on the desk you know just moving the differential back and forth nice smooth action um you have a really neat like five millimeter wrench which can uh, actually adjust the nut here i've already loosened it off but we can take a look at what you got going on here all right so there's the there's the nut there's your uh, spring steel. So you got two spring steel. Oh, well, you got multiples here. This is my first time opening this up. So you got multiple spring steel setup, which is awesome. This is great. Not many, pl not many companies uh, offer uh, multiple, um, uh, multiple washers like this. Uh, what are those washers called? Uh, bevel washers. Um, a lot of them just give you one, and that's it. But the great thing is, is they give you multiple ones so you can really stack them up nicely to get that right nice smooth differential feel and if you go ahead and buy like a thrust master kit by um sorry uh slap master thrust uh kit um and put that on there with this setup here or yokomo thrust you definitely get a nice smooth differential um and then you got your hub here and then you got your standard d-ring setup here which is quite nice as well. All right, so there you go. So you got a standard D-ring going on there. And so, and that's pretty much it. And uh, it just runs on, it's just like a standard uh, differential. Uh, so when it comes uh, to getting parts and so on and so forth, yeah, it's nice CNC machine, uh, easy to attain, especially for the differential rings. So yeah, it's a nice setup there. So that's a spring, uh, spring steel bevel washers. All this stuff that I'm doing right now, it's all in real time. This was not scripted whatsoever. Uh, so I was quite surprised to see all those bevel washers, which is a nice feature to have. Um, so there you have it. So that's the differential. Nice, light. You get a lot of features. Uh, you know, it really makes that, it'll definitely make that differential a thousand times smoother. 
if you uh, put uh, a nice uh, thrust bearing on there. But as it stands, smooth as glass. But if you want to go that extra mile, I would definitely get like a thrust uh, kit. Regardless of what differential I have, I always put a thrust kit on my differential. Anyway, let's continue on here. Uh, so that's the, the rear end. Uh, so we've got the damper tubes here. We've got a nice uh, CNC machined uh, aluminum body here with the uh, Hero Factory uh, etched on there. Um, now the actual uh, sliding tube here is, uh, I think it's uh, like Delrin, uh, dyed Delrin, and a nice smooth action here. And what I love, what I love about like uh, Hero Factory's uh, designs are, you know, it's just like little subtle designs here. Like, you know, a lot of a lot of companies wouldn't even bother taking a few millimeters out of this. They would just leave it flat as it as it is. But he's gone that extra mile just to get that notch out. It's, you know, it's all about the details. And, uh, you know, it's really beautiful. It's really nicely done. You know, he's definitely put a lot of thought into the design. Um, you know, it's three millimeter thick bracing throughout the whole unit here. This is obviously to hold not only your lipo, uh, you know, it's also to um, keep the damper stays in, obviously your body, and uh, but it also your spring retainer. You know, it's ideal to have a nice stiff carbon fiber platform where this does not flex whatsoever under load. Um, so this is great to have, you know, just so stiff, so stiff, like I'm putting on quite a bit of pressure there. Um, but yeah, like, uh, with uh, the spring retainer, uh, you have uh, two positions that you can choose. You can choose an inner or an outer. Uh, the actual spring retainer itself, uh, it's kind of difficult to see in the light, I'm sorry, but uh, that is a nice hard, uh, like a steel, a nice steel, so it won't wear or won't chip away like uh, some of the aluminum spring retainers. Uh, so that's nice to have, and by the looks of it, you can run um, various uh, company uh, side springs so like associated Yokomo so you're not limited to uh, this particular manufacturer side spring which is nice to have um, so that's that for the uh, carbon fiber bracing uh, the pivot ball system that's VBC it looks pretty nice well designed I don't think you'll have any problems whatsoever with uh, the VBC pivot ball set up there I don't know if you can see that well but there you go, just in the back there. Nicely done. Um, uh, I love the the lipo holder. Um, I wish a lot of companies would go this route. Uh, I know CRC's uh, XTI Worlds have uh, gone with that, and uh, it just makes world of a difference. You know, taping. You know, some people like to tape. That's okay. You know, but for me, I just rather have something where I could just simply undo undo the actual uh, rubber band put my lipo in do it up again and you're good to go and no the rubber band will not tweak the chassis whatsoever it won't I, there's this, there's this idea that these rubber bands will cause like a twist or a tweak in the chassis that's that's just a bunch of junk so but uh anyway so that's a nice feature to have as well I'm going to uh the the pitching damper here uh this is beautiful uh this is uh uh, aluminum, uh, I think it's uh, once again uh, T775 uh, aluminum, CNC machined, um, big bore, uh, which is kind of like the trend right now. Uh, a lot of guys, a lot, a lot of guys are actually switching over to Yokomo X Shock for their 112 scales. But like you know, Hito Factory is already ahead of the game. They already have this nice big bore damper for the. Um, for the uh, 12x which is really nice uh, definitely will help uh, smooth out the bumps make the car handle consistently and smoothly on uh, whatever track surfaces uh, you're going on and uh, yeah definitely a nice feature this the body is all machined aluminum uh, you have a nice aluminum collar here to adjust uh, the spring load um, yeah you can't go wrong with this damper uh, I'm pretty sure it comes with two and three hole pistons uh, I don't personally have the kit with me, so I, or the the manual, so I'm unable to check that. But I read somewhere in the description that you can uh, change the piston size. Um, one other thing uh, on the back, you can also change uh, the track width. 
So if, uh, if you're looking to adjust the track width uh, to a certain, you know, the maximum or to a smaller track width, uh, it's possible to do that as well. And uh, one other thing is these inserts here. Uh, you cannot you you cannot use associated or any other manufacturer inserts. These are uh, like the VBC own uh, design, so you're going to have to use VBC's designed inserts. But you know that's not really an issue. You'll be you'll be fine with those. Yokomo is the same way. Um, let's see here. Let's see here. What's next? Let's go to. The floating servo mount. I think this is absolutely amazing. Not many companies have this kind of setup right now. And I think this is uh, something that uh, will be used on a lot of 112 scale chassis uh, in the near in the next couple of years. So uh, you have this uh, central uh, aluminum mount which uh, acts as uh, uh, the damper support. Uh, this uh, aluminum mount is uh, CNC machine black anodized. Lo I, like I said, I love the black anodized look. Like if I could, uh, uh, you know, show you this in person, you'd fall in love with the black anodizing as well. It's so nice, so nice. Um, the carbon fiber, like I mentioned earlier, it's uh, three millimeters thick, very sturdy, especially when the servo undergoes uh, loads uh, going into the corner. You want to make sure that this is uh, very stiff and very sturdy. Three millimeters thick, that should definitely do the job. Uh, this servo has. Uh, this has uh, different um, hole placements, so depending on the servo that you're running, uh, I'm not too sure uh, whether or not this is limited to like certain brands. Um, I don't know whether or not uh, uh, Sanwa, uh, Sanwa servo will fit. Well, the thing is, though, Sanwa tends to be difficult for most chassis, but you know, you run your standard like uh, you know your Futaba. Um, I don't know about Savox. Savox is a tricky uh, design as well, but you know your general run-of-the-mill uh, servos would definitely fit in there. If I had a manual, I'd be able to tell you uh, exactly um, what servos will and will not work. But anyway, really neat design. The floating servo design here. I don't know if you could see it there. See, it's not even touching the chassis. That will help uh, give uh, the chassis um, uh, an even flex. And so it'll make the car consistent and predictable throughout the race. Uh, as you know, with uh, touring car racing, uh, that's like the big thing right now is, uh, you know, floating servos, even chassis flex. You know, you want to make sure everything is uh, symmetrical in order to get the chassis to flex nice and evenly. All right. Now let's go to the front end here. Uh, this is kind of stand, pretty standard uh, 112 scale front end. Um, you are running, uh, you know, kind of like the associated style front end. Uh, these blocks are all uh, CNC machined, so your caster blocks with multiple positions. So you can adjust it just like your associated caster setup. Um, you can adjust uh, your track width as well. Uh, you can adjust, put placing shims here, you can adjust the track width wide or narrow, depending on what you need to do. Uh, caster as well. Uh, you got these uh, nice uh, uh, machined uh, shims here to adjust the caster depending on uh, your track conditions. Um, as you can see here, uh, there's uh, the VBC plastic. Uh, I think I said this earlier, really sleek design, really nice. I like it. Um, you know, it uh, it's very durable. Uh, I don't think you'll have any issues whatsoever with uh, damaging the front end of this car whatsoever. Um, the front end itself, it's very durable. You got the lower aluminum bulkhead and uh, the upper caster block all machined out of aluminum. It's pretty much bulletproof, so you shouldn't have any issues there. Uh, just to let you know, I updated my Yokomo chassis to like a team bomber conversion, and uh, I paid uh, some money just to have this set up. But you know, when you buy this chassis, it's already there, ready to go. So you're already uh, ahead of the game for when it comes to some manufacturers. Um, what else? Uh, so yeah, the plastics look really nice. Uh, the kingpin setup here, uh, you know, your standard kingpin setup, very nicely done. Now this is like a VBC, um, VBC uh, front spindle setup here. Um, quite sturdy. Uh, 
looks at first I thought you know you could do like a, like a trailing like a trail arm setup here but it's just the way that uh, they've designed it so it's uh, it's quite a heavy duty uh, point around here which will definitely improve the durability of the axle so yeah uh, you know the tunability uh, it's it's uh, just as good as any chassis um, you know the durability is definitely there um, I bet you the on-track performance is quite phenomenal. Um, I just uh, haven't been able to go out on the track yet. Um, I'm just like running through things here in my head. Um, spring steel turnbuckles on the front end, so you got that extra durability. Aluminum uh, T775 turnbuckles. Now one thing I did forget, these side links. Now uh, he designed these side links. So the side links are going to be moving in, moving in just slightly by one millimeter over the across, I think one millimeter. And what that does is that uh, gives the, the chassis, the rear end, uh, a four wheel steer. And what four wheel steer will do is will allow the car to steer in the corner. You know, it'll be a little bit more aggressive in the corners, which is uh, you know, ideal for one twelve scale. And so he's designed that into the chassis. Um, the links, uh, the links themselves are very, 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 very sturdy, very durable, nice uh, composite VBC plastics. Um, like I said, all the plastics are done by VBC, really nicely done. Um, front end kingpin setup, really nicely done. Um, you got these nice uh, front guards here. Um, I know for a fact racing out on asphalt or carpet with uh, wooden boards. These are a lifesaver, especially uh, if you've had a few knocks in the boards. It really protects the chassis, really nicely done there. Um, the actual um, body posts are machined uh, th with threads, and so you can have adjustable uh, body height by adjusting uh, some plastic, uh, plastic or aluminum nuts. I'm not too sure, I don't have them with me, but. In the website, they'll look like aluminum, but I could be wrong. Overall, uh, you know, from what I've seen so far, you know, like this is kind of like my first time seeing this chassis. Uh, I'm really impressed with the design and layout of this uh, chassis. Really nicely done. Uh, he's definitely uh, Mr. Hiro uh, uh, Naka, uh, Nakatani has definitely put in a lot of time and effort into this design. And as I mentioned before, like he's done remarkably well with this chassis, especially, you know, in international uh, races like the AOC, uh, so on and so forth. So this chassis is definitely capable of hanging up there with the, the other manufacturers that you see commonly in North America and Europe. Um, what else can I add to this? You know, if you want something unique and exotic, uh, that you wouldn't necessarily see anywhere else, you know, because, you know, back in North America, it's just swamped with CRCs, uh, associated uh, chassis, x-rays. If you want something different, I would definitely, definitely go for the Hero factory setup. Really nice. You can't go wrong with the black anodizing. If I was to give, like, a rating out of 10, I would give this... Uh, a 9 out of 10. Uh, the only thing that uh, I say is a bit of a drawback, but not really, is having the option of multiple servo positions for all servos. That would have been nice. And um, maybe a thrust bearing on the actual differential. But I'm just being picky. But other than that, really nice chassis kit, really nice design. I highly suggest checking out Hero Factory and you know, picking one of these up, really nice. And uh, I don't think you can go wrong with this chassis at all. All right, so that's my opinion. I hope this was of help. And uh, yeah, definitely check out Hero Factory. They also make F1 components, F1 chassis, and uh, also tools. So definitely check them out for all that other stuff as well. All right, bye-bye.